Welcome back. Today we'll be searching for Nevada State Historical Markers numbers 216 through 220. Let's go ahead and begin in Churchill County. Just east of Fallon on US 50 is Harmon Junction. At Harmon Junction we will need to travel a little over 10 miles down State Route 116 towards Stillwater. Around 250 yards before State Route 116 turns to dirt will be our next marker. Located on the right hand side in a dirt pullout is marker number 216, Stillwater. Stillwater. Stillwater's beginning predates Nevada's advent to statehood by two years. Named for large pools of tranquil water nearby, the town originated as an Overland State Station in 1862, was granted a post office in 1865, and became Churchill's third county seat in 1868. The community population peaked in 1880, and when the county seat was removed to Fallon in 1904, barely 30 residents remained. Although their community center has disappeared, the valley's lush fields and abundant crops attest to the untiring efforts of Stillwater's pioneer ranchers and their descendants who met the desert's challenge with dedication and determination. The Stillwater National Wildlife Refuge of 163,000 acres of wetland habitat and natural breeding and feeding groups for waterfowl was created in 1949. The Stillwater Indian Reservation adjoins the refuge. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 216. Let's get back on to US 50 and travel east for 117 miles to the junction of US 50 and State Route 376. If we drive just a little over 32 and a half miles down State Route 376, we will find our next marker on the northbound shoulder. Here is marker number 217, Tate's Stage Station, 1886-1901. Tate's Stage Station, 1886-1901. Long after the railroads came to Nevada and the branch lines were extended towards the heartland of the state, horse-drawn stages transported people and mail from railhead to the hinterlands. The principal routes were covered by such well-known lines as Overland Mail and Stage Company, William Hill Beachy Railroad Stage Lines, Butterfields, Wells Fargo and Company, Pioneer Stage Line, Carson and Columbus Stage Line, plus other lesser-known lines. Thomas Tate subcontracted mail routes in central Nevada for over 30 years. In 1886, he and his wife established a station due east as an overnight stop between the county seats of Austin and Belmont. Stages met here and exchanged passengers and mail and obtained fresh horses. Tommy's wife fed and lodged the passengers in what became a local social center. Esther Tate organized the first school in the area. The Tates maintained this station until 1901. Belmont lost the county seat in 1905. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 217. Let's turn around now and head back to South Reno. Located on Toll Road right across from Ravaza Road will be our next marker. Marker number 218, Geiger Station. Geiger Station. Seven-tenths of a mile east of this marker was Geiger Station, the largest station on the Geiger Grade Toll Road, the main thoroughfare between the Comstock Road and the ranches of the Truckee Meadows. Located at the site were a toll house, three blacksmith shops, three barns, several corrals, and an inn named the Magnolia House. During the boom years of the Comstock load, the 1860s and 1870s, the station was crowded with freight outfits, stagecoaches, and weary teamsters. Passing travelers could stop at the inn for a drink or a quick meal. Following the extension of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad to Reno in August 1872, the toll road fell into disuse, and a few years later it became a public highway. Magnolia House continued to operate until 1915. Social activity at the inn included dances, attracting residents from Virginia City, nearby valleys, and the Truckee Meadows. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 218. Next, let's turn around and travel west to Lake Tahoe on State Route 431. Once at the roundabout in Incline Village, we will need to keep left on State Route 28 for about 11 miles. Then we'll need to turn right onto US 50 and drive close to 3 miles to Glenbrook Road. And our next marker, marker number 219, Glenbrook. Glenbrook. Lumbering operations in the Glenbrook area of Lake Tahoe began in 1861. Consolidation of V-flume systems in and near Clear Creek Canyon by 1872 made it possible to float lumber, cordwood, and sod material from Spooner's Summit to Carson City and to eliminate wagon hauling over the nine-year-old Lake Bigler Toll Road, Kings Canyon Road. In 1873, the new Carson and Tahoe Lumber and Fluming Company under Duane Bliss assumed all operations, becoming the largest Comstock wood and lumber combine. It controlled over 50,000 acres of timberland, operating two to four sawmills, two Tahoe Lake steam tugs to tow logs, two logging railroads, 
the logging camps employing 500 men, and a planing mill and box factory in Carson City. Timber depletion and reduced Comstock mining closed the company in 1898. It had taken 750 million board feet of lumber and 500,000 cords of wood from the Tahoe Basin Forest during its lifetime. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 219. Let's head off the mountain and drive back to Reno. Located on the corner of 4th Street and Tawana Street is the Reno Salvage Yard and our next marker, marker number 220, The Fight of the Century. The Fight of the Century. On this site, on July 4th, 1910, Reno hosted the Fight of the Century, a heavyweight championship boxing match between John Arthur Jack Johnson, the African-American title holder, and James J. Jim Jeffries, a former champion seeking to regain the title he had vacated in 1904. Jeffries had refereed a previous championship bout between Marvin Hart and Jack Root at this site on July 3, 1905, but the promotion of the ex-champion as the Great White Hope focused worldwide attention on his 1910 contest with the talented Johnson, known as the Galveston Giant. Gamblers had their money on Jeffries, but Johnson easily handled his opponent and Jeffries' trainers called the fight in the 15th round to save their man from a disgrace of a knockout. Organized by famed promoter Tex Rickard, the fight brought over 30,000 fans to Reno, some 22,000 of whom packed the arena here on the day of the fight. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 220.